Okay, hey everybody, welcome to uh, Sunday, our uh, regular live stream on uh, Sundays. We have uh, our usual q and I'll answer as many questions as I can, and uh, we'll maybe even do some requests. We have our question of the day, a uh, lot of fun stuff to get to. So uh, welcome, first of all, if uh, you are a, uh, a new, new viewer, welcome. Um, and if you are a returning viewer, welcome back as well. Subscribers, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and uh, please click on that subscribe link. Uh, and I hope you'll join us for a lot of our, of our live streams. We've got a whole bunch of live streams happening. Uh, Mondays, we have our beginner band. And Tuesday, uh, I'm sorry, Wednesdays is advanced band. Fridays is jazz. Okay, so a lot of fun stuff. Um, just kind of working out a few little technical issues here, but I think we're good. Hopefully we won't have too much lag. I'm getting a little bit of a warning on my uh, computer, but we'll see. Hopefully we won't have a, a lag. Uh, but if we do, we'll just roll with it, right? So welcome everybody to, uh, to our stream. Uh, what I'm going to do is jump in right away. Uh, we don't have our, our usual uh, helper Dennis with us just yet. He's going to try to join us. Uh, and get connected on our uh, on our live stream here. So why don't we jump right into some questions, okay, guys? Uh, let's see. We've have let's do some shout outs. We have Allison is here, and Horse Craper is here, and uh, Gavin. A lot of familiar faces here. Uh, Kimation Productions. Uh, Gavin Tap. We'll do we'll do a couple of questions right off the bat, okay? Gavin Tap is asking, how do you get a jazzier sound? And I think the my biggest advice for that to get a jazzier sound is you've got to uh, listen to as many professional recordings as you can. So listen to, uh, go out on YouTube and look up. Uh, actually, the, the first thing to do is to go on, uh, go and search up uh, a list of the top jazz musicians on your instrument. Just Google that. And then you go to YouTube and you look up those names and you just start listening and you listen and you imitate. Okay, so let's continue on with some more questions. Diego Gutierrez is here. Hello, Diego. Uh, Horse Craver, how do you play A sharp on clarinet? That's an easy, quick one we can do. A sharp on clarinet is, does anyone know what the other name for A sharp is? Here's an A sharp. Well, that's it. This is going to be a clarinet A sharp. The other name for A sharp is B flat, right? And we play that with our front finger here and our back key here. That is an A sharp, otherwise known as B flat. You can also play it here. Mike Hamilton, yes, you can Spotify uh, musicians. All right, some more questions. And just checking in, Dennis, are, we, are you with us yet? Okay, we don't quite have Dennis. Uh, so hopefully, Whatever our uh, our little bit of uh, sound issues will will work themselves out. Okay, so yeah, a lot of you got the right answer on my clarinet question. Good job. Okay, some more questions. Do, 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 do. Jason Nguyen, can I show you how to play "I'm Blue" on the alto sax? I actually don't know that song, Jason. Um, I might be able to might be able to look it up, uh, but maybe that's something I can do as a request. Okay, Allison Wu. How long should we practice a day to make steady progress? And does it matter if we take one week break from our instrument? Okay, Allison, that's a good question. Um, I would say it's better not to take a whole week off. Um, I would say a, a really good practice routine, certainly every day. If you did, well, the amount of time you practice is basically directly equal to how much better you're going to get. I mean, if you practice, there are people who practice four, five, six hours a day. And those are people that are really serious about like, you know, being a professional. If you are uh, trying to get better, if you practiced uh, a half hour a day, that would be awesome. If you did a couple days a week for an hour, that would be good too. I wouldn't recommend taking a whole week off. Okay. Some more questions. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, Dennis is in our chat highlighting questions for us, even though we couldn't quite get him on the line. Sorry about our technical difficulties there. Allison, oh, I, Dennis, I did get Allison's question before you highlighted it. Okay, um, LPS Gamer, 
Whenever I try to growl on the clarinet, I can't. The humming just turns into air. How can I fix that? Well, let me see. Growling on the clarinet. Uh, the humming just turns into air. All I can say is just keep at it. Make sure, like, take the clarinet out of your mouth and go, hmm, and then set your embouchure. So it's like you're humming. You're kind of singing a little bit as you play. And that will give you that will give you the the, the growl. So keep working on it. Um, Isabella Klein, how to play C sharp on flute? Here you go, Isabella. Isabel, C sharp on flute is the no fingers note. It's other otherwise known as D flat. And we just hold our flute. Now we say no fingers, but we are using our right hand pinky on the E flat key because that is our balance point on the flute. One of our balance points. So D flat, C sharp, same thing, no fingers, except for the pinky. There you go. Okay. Uh, Xavier is requesting videos on tuba, especially expanding range or chamber groups. You know, Xavier, a friend of mine, uh, Carol, who has done, uh, Carol, who is the, uh, Yanch is the tubist for the Philadelphia Orchestra, and uh, she has done a couple videos on my channel. She's actually doing her own series of videos coming out soon. So I'll talk to Carol, and I will pass along that request, okay? Um, Angelina wants Despacito on clarinet. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Mike Hamilton, we are having some technical issues with, with Dennis, and I think it's probably on my end. I don't think it's his fault. I think I maybe have the wrong thing clicked on my whole setup here. So we'll try to get that fixed for next time. Um, okay. Uh, Joe here in the chat has highlighted a question from Seth Benjamin Mason. Mr. Selfridge, I've, I've asked the same question for two weeks. How do you get low notes sounding on the tenor sax? Okay. So low notes on the saxophone is an issue for a lot of people. So I'm just gonna show you on my tenor sax. What you have to do for low notes, folks, is make sure you've got a good embouchure and you're doing a O-shaped embouchure, O. All right, so we have our O-shaped embouchure, O with firm lips on the bottom that goes over your bottom teeth and it forms a, for a, a, firm, it forms a firm cushion for the, the reed. All right, and then your reed goes on there. Teeth on top. The problem when people have tr trouble getting low notes is because usually they're using their bottom lip to push up into the reed too much, like this. And your bottom lip gets squished. If, if you go to an O shape and your bottom lip is strong under the reed, not pushing up too much, you can go down into your lower range. So as you're going down into your lower range, imagine like your mouth is opening up a little bit. Oh, and people say drop your jaw. I don't really like that phrase that much because sometimes kids think drop your jaw, you go, Wah. it doesn't open that much, just a little bit, like your teeth are opening up a little bit. There we go. And if your saxophone is has any kind of a leak issues with the pads, you're going to have trouble with your low notes. So that's another thing to check. All right. So a couple people are asking for Ghostbusters on sax. Interesting. Um, okay. Do -da 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 -da. Let me see. It would be like a... I have my keyboard here, obviously. Da -da 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 -da. Da, 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 da. I'm not even sure what key it's in. I just picked a key. So I could do it in the key I just played it in. I did that. A, A, C sharp, A, B, G. Da, 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 da. Here we go. There's a little bit of Ghostbusters. Why not? Okay. Cactus Gamer. How do I, Cactus Gamer, how do I, oh, sorry. <laughs> I do jazz band on tenor sax. I'm wondering if there's a way to get a jazzier sound out of my saxophone. So I'm not sure if this was your question you had earlier, but I, I, I talked about this just a few minutes ago. You should Google 
uh, famous jazz saxophone players, famous jazz tenor sax players, and anyone in the chat, you can start throwing out some names of the most famous jazz sax players. I'll get you started. There's John Coltrane. There's Sonny Rollins. Uh, there's Dexter Gordon. Uh, there's Coleman Hawkins. Keep naming some uh, famous jazz sax players, everybody. And you Google those names, and you go to YouTube, and you listen, listen, listen to as much jazz as you can, and you start to imitate that in the way you play. All right? Um, okay. Trey Humanius. Do I have the Advanced Method Book Volume 1 for alto sax? I think you mean the Rubank. I'm pretty sure. I, actually, I don't have it for alto sax, I don't think. Do you mean the Rubank book, Trey? The Rubank books are great. Oh, we got some sax names coming in. Mike Hamilton says Charlie Parker. Very good. Allison Weaver says Kenny G. Very good. Kimation Productions. Can I play Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques on... Uh, Kimation, what instrument? I will do Frere Jacques. I will also... Let me do Despacito. Someone was asking for Despacito. Da, 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 So I have to remember what key I'm going to do it in. No, I'm going to do it in... Uh... So if you want to play that, it's G... I'm doing it in a... That's kind of an easier key. G, F sharp, E, B. That's how it starts. C. D. F sharp. There you go. Despacito. Uh, let's see. Oh, Dennis, I hear you now. Yep. What happened? I have no idea. All right. It's magic. We got Dennis on the line. Everyone say hi to Dennis. Okay. So um, I was going to do, oh, Mike Hamilton is coming up with all kinds of great uh, uh, saxophone player names in the chat. You guys should pay attention to uh, Mike Hamilton's contributions there. Uh, Bob R says Stan Getz. Very good, Bob. I love Stan Getz. Um, okay. Oh, Kimation, I was looking for you to tell me what instrument. Oh, flute. Okay. So I'm going to play Frere Jacques for Kimation Productions right now. Ah, uh, Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques. The, the common key for this one for beginners is to do B-flat. So I'm going to do it on B-flat. B-flat, C, D, B-flat. Sorry. There we go. Okay. So, Dennis, you're getting a lot of hellos in the chat. Um, yeah, I saw that. Now that we have you on the line, is there a question I can go to? Absolutely. Let me uh, have it all set up here. Okay. This is from how long should we practice a day to make steady progress? And does it matter if we take a one week break from our instrument? Okay. So, Dennis, I actually got that one. Um, oh, okay. It's, that's a good question, though. And I said, practice as much as you can fit in your schedule. The more you practice, the better you're going to get. I think as a minimum, I'd say 30, 20 to 30 minutes a day, depending on how old you are. And uh, just to keep your progress going. I don't recommend taking a whole week off because you make better progress with little bits at a time. And next question. When I have a, yeah, how do I get good articulation on alto sax? Good articulation on alto sax. Um, okay, so the way you get good at articulation for any instrument, everybody, is you start at a slow tempo and take... Uh, take actually, if I could show you guys something... All right, I'm gonna take you on a little trip over here to my uh, to my my website, okay? And if you look here, if you go over to this is this relates to the articulation question. These are the, the materials that I use for my live stream classes. If you go to live stream advanced band, all right, this is good articulation practice, everybody. You go down to this video, articulation practice. And I, I think you're going to get sound. Let me see if we can get you some sound here. And it, it, it takes you through and shows you your instrument. Okay. So 
I'm just going to turn off the sound there. And I'm just going to show you what you would do. You would go here and look for your instrument. And here's alto sax, the E flat line. And you work on something like this. You take a scale and you do quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, sixteenth notes. And it works on getting your tonguing a little faster. <laughs> gradually builds up your uh, it gradually builds up your your articulation ability okay next question Dennis okay uh, I do jazz band on tenor sax did you do that one and yes. I'm wondering if there's a way you did that one? yeah the good sound question yeah that's okay. where we're that's where uh, we're talking about all the sax players yeah right how do you uh, how do you play scales on the flute okay scales on the flute well scales on the flute are the same as again, as any instrument, does anyone know? Well, we'll see. Um, we're, we're going to see if we can get some answers on, on how do you build a scale. Does anyone know um, what is the musical alphabet? This might be kind of an easy question. So what is the musical alphabet? I'm going to play it for you right here. What I just played is I played the musical alphabet. We all know the regular alphabet which is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, right? The musical alphabet only goes up to G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So, and then when you get to G, you start over again at A, right? So the rule about playing any scale is that every scale you play has to have all of the music letters of the, alpha, the, letters of the musical alphabet in it. So if I'm playing a C scale, I have to go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. I got all the letters. And then you just have to know whether you have sharps or flats. So a C major scale has no sharps or flats. But if I do an F major scale, I have to get all the letters. F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. But I know I have to put a flat on the B flat there. So that makes an F major scale. So there's a little bit about playing scales. I see a lot of you got the right answer of uh, the, the musical scale. Seth, Benjamin, uh, and uh, let's see, Christian, Christian Hina Josa. Okay. All right. Let's actually, there's a, another question I wanted to get to. Um, where is it back here? Oh. So Teresa highlighted a question from Allison Weaver. Does age matter with sax? And <laughs> I think, I mean, age, so basically age doesn't matter with any instrument uh, is, the, is the answer. Uh, as long as you're big enough to hold the instrument, then you're old enough to play it, basically. I'd say uh, the, the youngest I've ever seen someone play a saxophone or a wind instrument is like, maybe eight years old, eight, nine years old is about the youngest. And then there on up, anyone can play. Okay, Dennis. All right. Um, yeah, hold on, here it is. Okay. Um, this is from uh, LPS Garner Love. Uh, whenever I try to growl on the clarinet, did you get that one? I did get that one. Okay. I'm trying to go back to the ones I had. Um, Let me let me take one from uh, Mason. Okay. Mason, who is uh, his name is Mason, but his user his user profile is Seth Benjamin, but it's Mason, and Mason is asking me, uh, how do you how do you remember your key signatures? I think he asked me. So here's another thing I want to show you guys from my website. So again, you go to drselfridgemusic.com over here, all right, and it's actually the same page we were just on. If you go to the circle of fourths right here, the circle of keys is a great way to learn your key signatures because there's a little trick to it. If you start here at C major, you have no sharps and no flats. But when you go over to F major, you have one flat. When you go over to B flat major, we have two flats. And E flat major has three flats. And it's a pattern all the way down. One flat, two flat, three flat, four flat, five flat, six flat. And then on this side, it's sharps. G has one sharp. D has two sharps. A has three sharps, and so on and so forth. So that's a good little trick. If you've never done that before, 
Uh, get to know your circle of forts. It'll help you remember your key signatures. Okay. Dennis. Yeah, how about the, I guess, uh, Satana, any advice for switching from clarinet to tenor sax? Um, switching from clarinet to tenor sax is pretty easy. The embouchure is very similar, except on the clarinet, your angle of playing is more down. So the clarinet proper playing angle is a 35 to like 45 degree angle, like this. When you play your tenor sax, the way it's set up, the, the tenor sax mouthpiece is meant to come into your mouth at a straight angle. So that's going to be a little different. Saxophone, clarinet. Saxophone, clarinet. And then just getting to know the difference in the fingerings, where the all the notes on the saxophone are the same as the upper register of your clarinet. B-A-G-F-E-D. Okay? Good. Next question. Okay. Um says, this is from LPS Gamer Love. There are only two oboes, one tenor sax, and no euphoniums, and two tubas in is this my a math, band. Is this a math word problem, Dennis? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> start it, wait, start, I have to keep track. Start it again. Uh, yeah, he said there are only two oboes. Two oboes. One tenor sax. One tenor sax. No euphoniums. No euphoniums. And two tubas in my band. Okay. I think he wants to know what can he do with it. Oh, oh, in his band, he wants to know what he can play yeah. with, with that instrumentation. Yeah. Um, well, oh boy, okay. Oh, you know what? Well, there are these arrangements uh, on J... I don't know if you can actually go out and, and you know, uh, buy arrangements. Um, but if you go to... I'm going to go to jwpepper.com. Uh, this is where a lot of your music teachers, everybody, get their sheet music from. Uh, and they have this thing called flex band arrangements. So flex band arrangements are really great um, because what they do is they they give you a lot of options like this one. Here it is, flex band. Uh, oh, we did this one in, in my concert band, in my school band this year, Brazilian Sleigh Bells. It's a lot of fun. So let me click on it here. And what it does is it gives you I'm just going to pause this. I don't know. If, I don't think you're going to be able to see if I zoom in, but they give you part one and they give you all kinds of options: part two, part three, part four, part five. And so it's flexible. So if you have like sort of a, an unusual combination of instruments, you can you can do songs like that. Okay. Good. Let's do, um, folks. Let's do our question of the day. And I see Mike Hamilton had a question. Did I get the improv? Tr track that you sent. Oh, Mike, I didn't check my, my that email address recently, so I didn't see your email. Um, if you want to send me a video for critique, Mike, you could record it on your phone, and you could just e email it to me with, you, with my email address, okay? And if anyone uh, needs to reach me, or, you know, tweet at me, or anything like that, I want you guys to check out uh, this stuff here. Actually, I got my phone with me. Um, if anyone is on Instagram, or... Um, Twitter, uh, if you f go ahead and follow me on Instagram uh, or Twitter, I'll get a notification on my phone here. I'll give you a shout out. But if you need to email me for any reason, any questions, guys, my email is here uh, down at the bottom underneath my smiling face there. Uh, you can just get in touch with me at Dr. Selfridge on any of those uh, social media or the email drselfridgemusic at gmail.com. Okay, so Mike, that's how you could do that. All right, let's do our question of the day, folks. Question of the day. And actually, some of you have, been, have already been uh, uh, chiming in with this, but what I'd like to know is what song do you want me to do, do you most want me to do a tutorial for? Okay, and so now you're gonna check in with, uh, in the chat, and I'll be looking for your answers to what song would you like me to do a, a my next tutorial for? Angelina B. asks me, do I have a violin? I do not have a violin with me at home, Angelina. I'm sorry about that. I do have friends who, uh, who play violin. I'm sure there's some great violin channels out there. Maybe I'll have one of my friends on who plays violin. Okay. Jason Nguyen, I Want It That Way by the Backstreet Boys. All right, taking it back. Classic. Angelina B. Despacito. Uh, uh, Mason Benjamin says, Yakety Sax. Agus Sutikno says Alone by Marshmello Clarinet. 
uh, Bella Chow from our Russian friend. Uh, Thomas Train, I Want It That Way. Is that a popular song now, guys? It's interesting. Uh, that was popular when, not quite when I was your age, but uh, well, that's the Backstreet Boys, right? That's a while ago. Um, Isabella Klein wants Hedwig's theme. Uh, da, 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 da. Dance Monkey. Oh, I did a little bit of Dance Monkey on my uh, TikTok. If you guys check that, it's my only TikTok video right now. Um, do, 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 do. Um, I do have Pink Panther on the sax, I think, Grace. And Mike Hamilton, I know I need to get that. You want that Stevie Wonder happy birthday. Bill Withers, Lean on Me would be great. Bill Withers, a uh, great musician who we just uh, lost a few days ago. Um, oh, Xavier Alexander wants the Mozart, the Marriage of Figaro Overture. That's a, a great one. Okay. Um, Girls Like You by Maroon 5 from Commation. Okay, those are some great requests, you guys. Bohemian Rhapsody. Okay. So, let's do um, another question. And I think someone requested that I do uh, Hedwig's theme on the flute. I'm going to play that for you guys. I'm going to go to YouTube. And Dennis, why don't you ask me a question while I'm getting this ready for my request? Okay. Uh, the scale notes you listed looked like spam because there were other alphabet letters in there. Oh, I think that was uh, Terry just responding to someone. Oh, okay. Uh, there are... No, no, no. Uh, I, I do j jazz band on tenor sax, and I'm wondering if there's a way to get a jazzier sound out of my saxophone. Um, I actually got that one earlier. Um, jazzier sound out of your saxophone, you just you have to... Uh, listen to jazz players there's really uh, some people will, will say to get a jazz mouthpiece or jazz reeds i think you can get a jazz you don't need a jazz mouthpiece to get a jazzy sound i use the same mouthpiece whether i'm playing classical or jazz so um you just listen 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 to professional jazz players and imitate what they do okay all right here's a play along on flute for harry potter let's see if you guys can hear this Okay, I'm going to show you guys this. Ready? Um, and what I did, if you, if you want to learn a tutorial, if it's a tutorial, if it's a song or a tutorial I don't have, there's, you can Google it. Uh, there's you, other YouTube channels that have great stuff. So I'm going to do this little play along on flute for Hedwig's theme. And I've never practiced this, but we'll just see how it goes. And I don't think there's a count in, so I'm just going to do my best. fancy there so as you can see um, a lot of times you can find uh, songs uh, just by googling uh, you know YouTube look look for the name of the song sheet music and your instrument and a lot of times you can find it okay Dennis how about some questions yeah have you ever done doubling in any musicals yeah who's that from do you have the name uh, Xavier Alexander Xavier Alexander wants to know if I've done doubling for musicals yeah so every year my high school does a musical and I usually play in the pit orchestra for that. So usually I play the, um, the, the, the book that usually has like the most saxophone in it, but usually like read two. Usually read one is mostly flute and piccolo or oboe. So I usually do maybe read two, clarinet, some flute, alto sax. Uh, that's basically what, what I, sometimes there's soprano sax. That was a good question. All right, Dennis. Yes, another. Uh uh, Shanna Lake, can you do a D flat? Um, yeah, D flat for flute. D flat for flute. Yeah, actually, I got that one. Um, D flat is the no okay. fingers note. Everybody on flute, it's just okay. your just your pinky. Okay. All right. Here's another. One. What What is one of your favorite licks in jazz or funk? 
Oh, I remember that question uh, in the, on the jazz. Uh, uh, do, you, do you know who asked that, Dennis? Yeah, uh, Clueless. Okay, yeah, I remember that question uh, from our jazz class. My favorite lick? Huh. Oh. Well, you guys know the uh, <laughs> the famous lick that everyone kind of uh, doesn't make fun of, but it's kind of a it's kind of a meme now, and that's when you go uh, right. So so that's kind of a, a little bit of a funny thing because it's it's become kind of a, a inside joke. Um, my favorite lick, you know, one of the first licks I learned. Uh, in jazz is this really cool one that you can do on a on a dominant seven chord. So if you have this, this is a, a concert F dominant seven. And what you do on your instrument is you do this series of uh, major six, diatonic six. But you do it with like a chromatic approach like this. It's kind of one of my favorite ones to do. You can do it in different keys. There's all kinds of variations on it. So that's one of my favorite licks. Good one. All right, Dennis. Okay. Um, if there are more questions, I can look through too. Yeah, but there, there are some. Oh, yeah. Someone wants to. Can you. Um, can you play rock music on the flute and make it blend? I'm not sure I understand what that is, but yeah, this you... is from Snow. Snow? Le okay. Can, can you play rock music on the flute and make it blend? Yeah, I mean, well, flute is just such a naturally blending instrument. It blends with everything. Um, but yeah, rock music, you can certainly play on the flute. Uh, the most famous, one of the most famous... Uh, uses of the flute in rock music. Dennis, I don't know if you know this answer. The famous yeah. uh, Ian Anderson, right? Right. Yeah. And who was who's was his band? Was it I'm trying to remember? Yeah. I can't remember. But there was a famous rock I... rock band in the in this was that the sixties? Yes. Uh with a uh, of jet with a rock and roll flute, Ian Anderson. Classic. So okay. Let's see. Oh, Jason Nguyen, how do you play the entertainer on the alto sax? So Jason, it's kind of funny that you asked that question because the jazz lick I was just talking about, you actually use kind of, the that's kind of like a variation on the entertainer because the entertainer does that chromatic thing and then up a sixth. Uh, let me take this up an octave here. So it's a, uh, right? And I just played my lick that went, right? So the entertainer, uh, how does it go with the two parts here? So on sax, you would do, uh, it's in the key of A major. You go B, B, C, C sharp, A. B, C, C sharp, A, bum, 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 bum. And then A, B, C, C sharp. So it's an A major. Oh. Uh, something like that. Sorry, Jason, but there's the introduction, right? Uh, okay. Let's see how we're doing on time, everybody. We do a couple more requests, a couple more questions. Any requests coming in, Dennis, of songs to play? I might be able to play uh, some. The ones you kind of picked up on, one was uh, the Backstreet Boys. That mm -hmm. one's coming up a lot. Okay. And, uh, oh, by the way, Joe said Jethro Tull. He, Jethro he Tull, in. yes, Jethro yeah. Tull. Um, here's a good one from Allison. How do I prevent my sax keys from freezing in Marching Man? So... Marching Man can get very cold in, in our, my part of the country and other parts of the country um, because the season goes into November and it can get very cold. Um, so usually freezing saxophone keys is not the biggest issue. Usually the, what will freeze first is the valves on the trumpets. Sax keys should be able to move even if it's freezing cold out. It, your fingers get cold, but um, 
if your keys are maybe getting sticky, you can uh, try cleaning out the tone holes. I showed you this before. You take a piece of paper and put it in a uh, piece of paper. Actually, the old trick is to use a dollar bill, which I don't even have. <laughs> but all right, here's just a tiny, here's a tiny like post-it note, right? So you take a piece of paper, you put it in, and you kind of close the tone hole and clean off the pad like that. So that helps sometimes. All right, so any other requests? Um, okay, Pink Panther and Alto Sax. I play that every week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play 10 seconds of it. There you go. Um, do, 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 do. Other questions? You see any, any questions coming up, Dan? Uh, no, mostly they're in, throwing in. Uh, uh, okay, here's you know, the, things they've been throwing in requests and things. It's okay. Here's one yep. from our Russian friend. How do you? How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, oh, thank yeah. you. I want to ask: Does re do reeds and mouthpiece? Oh, okay. Does reeds and mouthpiece changing sounds? Okay. Oh, I, I know what you're asking. Does changing up your reed in your mouthpiece change your sound on the sax? Yes, it actually does. There's lots of different mouthpieces you can try. There's lots of different reeds you can try. Um, I was talking earlier about getting a jazz sound or a classical sound. Some people do buy a classical mouthpiece and a jazz mouthpiece. Like the Selmer Sea Star is like the classic classical mouthpiece. It's a little bit more, a little bit more closed and focused sound, more controlled. And then if you get into a, a, a bigger, more open mouthpiece, uh, uh, with the different, the baffle, with the, the shape of the inside of the mouthpiece can give you a, 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 a brighter, jazzier sound. So it's something you can play around with. You can try out, a lot of music stores will let you go and try out mouthpieces, uh, and then they will disinfect them. But you can try mouthpieces out. Xavier, what is my criteria? Oops, I lost my, uh, my chat. Right. Where did Xavier? What is your, cri my, your criteria for students to play auxiliary instruments like piccolo or alto flute, English horn, contra clock, uh, and flugel horn. Okay. My criteria is basically, the number one criteria is if it's a student that has an interest. You know, if, if a student has a big interest in playing an auxiliary or specialty instrument, they express that interest. And then, because to me as a teacher, if the student is really excited about it, that means they're going to practice it. Right. So obviously, if you want to play an auxiliary instrument, you have to have a basic level of skill on your primary instrument. So if it's a student um, who doesn't practice and doesn't put a lot of effort in, I might not want to let them do an extra instrument. But if it's a student who's very motivated and shows a big interest, I would let them try those instruments. OK, Allison Wu, what instrument do I think is easiest to play? Um, Uh, hmm. I would say, <laughs> um, the, the, the actual, oh, Francesca wants my favorite things on soprano sax. All right. I'll see if I can do that. Um, I'd say the easiest instrument to physically play is probably the drums because you literally hit it, but that doesn't mean it's the easiest instrument to make sound good. You know, um, some instruments are easier than others to make a sound on, but you still have to practice to get really good at it. So the drums are the easiest to make a sound on. Um, let me get my soprano out. All right. You guys see my soprano sax before? I'm going to play. I'm going to try to play this. It might be fun if I used a play along track for this one. All right, so I'm going to do on looking on good old YouTube, my favorite things, and I'm going to put jazz play along. All right, and you get a jazz play along. Let's see. Let's see what this one sounds like. Do, 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 do. Let's see what this one sounds like. Let me, I'll 
I'll show you what it looks like. That's what I'm looking at. All right, let me start this one over. Here we go, that sounds nice. Here we go. Adjust my read. All right, here we go. As I was saying, a lot of the stuff you can you can find on YouTube and find a lot of great resources. All right, let's do a couple more questions, then I'll do shout outs, and then we're going to wrap up for the day. So, Dennis, let's do maybe three yeah, more. Jason Snowin, how do you play All Star on the alto sax? Hey, now. Oh, Jason, check this out. Ready? Um, I don't know if you were on my advanced band uh, stream, but if you go to the advanced band page on my website, it's here homepage more advanced band okay and you go to mystery song challenge i had all star on my mystery song challenge let me find out where it is that's uh don't stop believing that's uh aladdin da -da 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 -da. where is it no that's not that. that's not it uh, I'm pretty sure I had it, had it on here. Well, I can't find it now. Oh, there it is. Number four. So I'll play it on sax. Number four. On alto sax. So there's the beginning of it. Okay. Let me check that out. All right. And next question. Mike Hamilton, can favorite things be played on alto? Yes. What are the letter notes? Uh, so my favorite things on alto. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, C sharp, G sharp. Then D sharp, C sharp. All right. Low G sharp. So it's all based on those three notes. C sharp, D sharp, G sharp. It gets a little trickier. take me a while to, to name all those notes but you got the beginning part of it c sharp g sharp d sharp c sharp all right all right um and let's finish up we got one more question then yeah tim what is the purpose of switching to brass instruments um what is the purpose of switching to brass instrument well mm -hmm. it really just depends on the situation that your your band is in if you're if you there's a couple reasons you might switch to a brand a brass instrument um, some kids just want to try something new so you can do that sometimes in a band a band director might want to switch usually we, we we try to avoid switching kids who from between instrument families like if you're playing a woodwind instrument like a sax or a clarinet or, or a, a flute we wouldn't want to switch you to uh, a trumpet because it's a whole completely different set of skills uh, but if you're already in that family it's easy to switch trumpet can easily switch to euphonium can easily switch to tuba trombone's a little trickier because you have to learn the new slide positions same thing in woodwinds flute clarinet sax oboe very similar fingerings bassoon bassoon gets a little bit uh, different but um, that's hopefully that makes sense okay so let's do everybody Let's do a couple of shout outs. And as I'm doing shout outs, I just want to, oh, I keep forgetting I have myself up in the corner there. <laughs> I have to get used to my new switching thing here. Um, 
what I want you guys to do is uh, go ahead and, and uh, send me a, a tweet or a, or a uh, you know a like on my Instagram or an email. I'm gonna leave that up there for a second. I'm gonna do a couple of shout outs. Okay, so Angelina, I know you want Despacito on piano. I really don't teach piano lessons, uh, but I'm sure there's a tutorial out there somewhere. Okay. Oh, Jason. Jason Nguyen, shout out for you. One of my uh, loyal viewers. Um, other shout outs. Go ahead and, and chime in for a shout out. I'll do as many as I can. And remind you all that tomorrow we have beginner band. Same time. Wednesday advanced band. Same time. And Friday jazz. Okay. Shout out for... Oh boy, here they come. Um... Shout out for Agus Sutikno. Hope I'm saying your name right. Shout out for Horse Craver, who I think had to leave. Thank you, Francesco. Good to see you. Jason Nguyen followed me on Instagram. Thank you. Um, Mike Hamilton, always a shout out for you. Allison Weaver. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And... Everybody, thanks so much for being here. I want to say thank you to uh, my helpers, as always, Joe and Terry in the chat. And uh, Dennis, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm glad we got it fixed. Yeah, that was kind of strange. And I, I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll get it worked out for tomorrow, I'm sure. Yep. But uh, thanks, Dennis. Everybody, have a great week. And I hope you'll come back tomorrow for my... Uh, for my beginner stream and also for uh, advanced band on Wednesday, jazz on Friday. Okay, guys, so until next time, have a great week. Make sure you practice. Okay, see you later. done.